All right, now let's go back to our first story where uh, we talked about North Korea firing two projectiles towards the sea earlier today, hours after showing willingness to resume denuclearization talks with the United States later this month. But let's to discuss this, I have with me a terrorism and counterinsurgency expert, Chidi Nwano, who joins me for his perspective on this. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, it's interesting to note that after North Korea had said they will be having talks with the United States later this month and then we get to see this news of them firing two projectiles uh, is it that is it a show of defiance on the part of North Korea or is the world missing something hey, good afternoon and thank you for having me on um, in, in in the North Korean case it's very important to look at the context of um, the North Korean conflict with the West and with its neighbor, South Korea, but also to look much more broadly at general, the general behavior of, you know, not just human beings, but countries, you know, who are essentially facing up to, to difficult tasks. So the first thing to understand is North Korea is the weaker party in this conflict, irrespective of their, you know, professed military strength. They, they would, any conflict, they would essentially lose. It would be very devastating for both sides, but they would lose. So this negotiation is one way of them continuing their aggressive behavior, but trying to extract the maximum concessions. And the way to do that is to continuously ensure that the other side, as in the United States and South Korea and the other parties, are aware of, of North Korea's military abilities and North Korea's threats. So I would look upon this as, as an advanced negotiating tactic, just to demonstrate that even though we're talking to you, we, will still re we still retain these capabilities and we're not afraid to demonstrate them. And then if you look at it in the wider context of, the, of uh, North Korea's behavior, they've always used this kind of aggressive behavior right before a, a task to ensure that whoever they're going to be dealing with uh, has a certain uh, amount of awareness of them on their abilities. All right, but looking at what is playing out here, is the world missing something out? Is, is there a strategy that um, the superpowers should be employing to ensure that North Korea does not go ahead with this uh, nuclearization plan? Um, it's, go it's very difficult, you know, and it's, it's not something that one can say the world can do this or can do that, because it's, it's very, very difficult, short of an all-out war on occupation, to stop a country that is determined to uh, develop nuclear weapons above all else. So the logical calculation for any country is that if I can develop nuclear weapons and I'm under sanctions, then that would mean that there will be a knock-on effect to health, education, food, etc. But North Korea is clearly uh, happy to accept those uh, challenges. They're happy to take those risks upon themselves and continue with their program. So talking about North Korea's nuclear program is it, it's, it's not talking about them getting nuclear weapons. I think it's safe to say they have nuclear devices, even if not actionable nuclear weapons. The question is now trying to make sure that those devices are not used or are not deployed, or more importantly, not sold on to other powers who might be more careless with them. So there's a lot of steps that need to be taken. And it, it needs a concerted action. And unfortunately, the, way, the geopolitics of the world now, with the dysfunction in the United States, the EU, UK, and the China US trade war, means that you don't have that united front that is needed to keep North Korea in line. So you're saying North Korea has an advantage? Uh, North Korea has a, the great advantage that any sort of power coming from a position of, I would not say strength, but a position of, um, of, of ability will, will have. The reality is the, they have something we don't want them to have. So possession being nine-tenths of the law, unless you're actually going to physically invade and take it off them, you have to give them something in order to get a change in behavior. So that is the great advantage they have. The big disadvantage they have is that the world can just say, okay, you've got nuclear weapons, so has India, so has Pakistan, so has China. Keep your nuclear weapons and do what you like with them. And then they, they, have, they have no other cards to play. Mm -hmm. A terrorism counterinsurgency expert, Chidi Nwano, thank you so much for your thoughts.